Hello my loves, welcome back to Vlogmas Day 8. I am in a rush today so I'm about to head over to St. John's for a lunch and then a walk around the Barbican. So hold off, I'm gonna prepare the advent calendar and the joke of the day later on when I get home. St. John needs no introduction as one of the most influential restaurants in Britain. It was founded in 1994 by Fergus Henderson and Trevor Gulliver with a third partner, John Spiteri. This location used to be a former bacon smokehouse, then a place to grow bean sprouts, and now a no frills and no nonsense dining location for some of the best seasonal British food London has to offer. The restaurant offers a nose to tail philosophy when it comes to the dining experience with a particular dedication to using offal as part of its daily changing menu. We'll talk about dishes that include bone marrow, beef kidneys, pig's ears, duck hearts and pigtails. Nothing is wasted here, it's seasonal, creative and it's catered to those who favour and appreciate bold cooking. Try and stealthily do this, I say as I'm holding like a huge camera, but I have just ordered an old fashioned taller than I'm used to and I'm trying to decide what mains I want so I'm thinking of maybe the beef and kidney pie because they are known for their pie so maybe that. Something to note that the use of mobile phones for making calls is not permitted in the dining room. One thing to note the pies normally take 45 minutes to order so if you do order a pie maybe get a starter so it gives the time for the kitchen or order something else so it comes as the pie is getting ready but I always see the pies on the Instagram so today go for the pie. We've got the famous bone marrow, so they've given you a pick and you use either side to get the bone marrow out onto the toast. And then you've also got some salt to put over the top as well. Next thing, we have some duck hearts with some lentils and mustard. I couldn't wait to eat, so I'll talk you through the next dishes we had on the foie sofa. I also ordered the crispy pig's ears with roast shallots and radishes. You don't make friends with salad, but I like to make friends with this one because I couldn't get enough. This is the poached turbot and white cabbage and is particularly enjoyable as a lighter choice for a starter before the main courses came out. This is the place with tartar sauce and I definitely dedicated a place in my stomach for this. It was so fresh, I loved it with a squeeze of lemon and I kept coming back for more. After drawing over all of the pie pictures on Instagram, it was finally time to tuck into this beef and kidney pie. It was meant for two, but I kept going back for another helping. It's bone marrow in the middle and especially enjoyable after seeing the chefs create this in the kitchen. Hearty, comforting and exactly what was needed on a cool winter's day. Here is a montage of the pie in every angle imaginable because to me, it was quite the sight to behold. I did order some greens and potatoes, but I think it was cooked with butter, so it's all about balance. Now heading over to the Barbican, which is a four minute walk from St. John's. St. John is also a really, really good place for donuts. I would arguably say one of the best in London. Um, I think I've shown it in my 18 things you must eat in London video, 23 things you must eat in London. And the donuts are in there as well from the Neil's Yard Coffin Garden branch. Wine is great, donuts are great, food is great. And if you just, yeah, want some like traditional British food with a modern twist, I would say come to St. John's. They um, don't waste the project that they use the food is top notch and the uh, service is great as well and it was just a really really nice time in there like i just had a great time for show you around this area now because i don't really come here that often and we'll go to the barbican after this this is the smithfield market and it's the largest wholesale meat market in the uk and one of the largest in europe the market itself has a history of 140 years but the site has over 1000 years of history so it's definitely a historically rich location Next stop, it's time to see the second biggest conservatory in London at the Barbican. It's now open seven days a week and the current guidelines here has implemented a one-way system and a recommended time of 20 minutes to fully enjoy the space. Jugged hair has very good sticky toffee pudding. So it is free to come to the conservatory, but you have to make a reservation in advance for the Barbican and it's on level three. So yeah, just here now and I've not been here in quite a few years. I think the last time I was here for a travel event, so it'd be really nice to come and see the Barbican again because it's, yeah, it's brilliant in here. So yeah, show around a little bit. For those looking to book, the tickets are released a week in advance on the website. A few fun facts about the conservatory courtesy of the website. It houses around 1,500 species of plants and trees with a mixture of rare, tropical and endangered plants. Props to the resident gardeners there because I'm having a problem even looking after eight of them in the studio, let alone ones that require different temperatures and maintenance. There are three pools here and two of them are home to koi, ghosts and grass carp from Japan and America, as well as other cold water fish such as roach, rudd and tench. The third pool is home to terrapins. Seeing these flowers and it reminds me of like 
I don't know, avatar or something. I feel like I'm in, it's so pretty. And this is also like how you should look after your plants because I definitely, my pea cities do not look as vibrant as this and as alive. I can feel my house plants being like, shoo, please take notes and see how you're meant to be taking care of us. I can hear Bruce being like, this is how I'm meant to look. This is how vibrant I'm meant to look. Just taking time for yourself, enjoying nature, appreciating it. been a few weeks since I've been in Chinatown and I thought you know I've not been here for a while so I thought I would take you along and show you around and also go to a uh, supermarket and pick some bits and bobs up as well but yeah I miss it it's literally like a second home I can never ever get enough of Chinatown like every time I'm here I'm always like oh, what a nice feeling <laughs> back to my ultimate seaweed Woo! I have never seen this before but mochi cookies or cocoa chips artificial matcha though but it looks so good wafer band these always remind me of childhood just having these wafers but i always used to get the strawberry one and the chocolate one I don't know where it is chocolate oh oh okay, we've got cappuccino flavor now coconut vanilla peanut <laughs> lemon chocolate there's the one chocolate so good always stocking up on hofan which are flat rice noodles here are just some of the things that you can get you get so much also you can get some of the traditional chinese like soup mixtures although i've never actually made one myself before this is like for chicken soup and you've got like goji berries and um all of the things i don't know how to say in english fox nuts lotus seeds you basically cook this with water and with chicken for a few hours and it's very nourishing and good for you i always get asked where i stock up when i get dumplings and like chinese sauces and snacks i always come to see Wu and i'll get a bunch of things here and just uh, put things in the freezer but they've got like fish and snacks they basically got everything that you would need so this is where i'd normally go these are always such a nostalgic throwback back to Old Hong, these like white rabbit sweets and they're like creamy and milky, so good. And in Singapore, you can actually get white rabbit flavored ice cream. And one day I'll be there to try you. I just started drinking again and offer a shot for every time I mention Chinatown in one of my London vlogs. I love it here so much and anytime I'm in the area, I always have to pay it a visit, even if it's a quick stroll through town. But anyway, back to the studio. Hello from Brucey and I. So we've just got back and I'm about to put up yesterday's video live and render and export and upload. I've been really, really enjoying putting those walking tours together. So I hope you've been enjoying it as well. And I thought now it's time for the Christmas joke of the day. I hope it was worth the wait. <laughs> I just found this online and I literally couldn't stop laughing. So what do you get when you cross Santa with a duck? A Christmas quacker. <laughs> I don't know why the idea, I don't know why it made me laugh so much. I'm just imagining a quacker. She's like, quack, quack, quack. <laughs> anyway, that is today's joke. Um, I need to look for tomorrow's one now. But my quick qu question, my Christmas question of the day is, wait, did I say Christmas joke? I meant Christmas joke of the day. I don't know whether that's a joke or question, but the Christmas question of the day is, um, what is your favorite part of a Christmas dinner? And I thought we'd keep it along with the food theme. So for me, it's the stuffing. And the funny story is that every year, my sister's always like, oh, we're gonna try and get some like fancy stuffing and things. And one year we did actually get some like super fancy, really lovely like sausage stuffing with like herbs and beautiful things in it. And I didn't really like it. Like, I don't know why, but for me, I just really love the cheap and cheerful sage and onion stuffing. Like, oh, sage and onion stuffing, stuffing balls are so good. And um, luckily my sisters don't really like it. So I get to have a whole bowl to myself. I just think it's so good drizzled with gravy and then a little bit of turkey. Oof. Oof, so good, so good. So for me, stuffing and obviously roast potatoes, but when it's like super crispy on the outside and like powdery on the inside. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of a Christmas dinner is, or if you don't do Christmas dinner, what your favorite meal to have is in general. Um, and yeah, I shall see you in tomorrow's vlog for Vlogmas day nine. It's been so, so, so amazing documenting all of this so far and even more joyous to share this with you. So thank you so much for following along and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. <laughs>